we had a very good meeting with the president uh, this morning, and we we spoke for uh, uh, about an hour and talked through some of the key issues and concerns. And uh, uh, we're trying. We're working with both presidents. Uh, I'm leaving uh, tonight to go to Yerevan, and I look forward to meeting with Sarxian. And we hope that through this uh, mediation, we can help the presidents to find a way forward. Uh, what, what changed? Uh, how do you think? What changed since the Vienna summit? Well, I'm not sure that anything has changed. We're trying to build on the progress that was made uh, in Vienna. As you know, uh, November 19th, the presidents did have a very good and positive meeting there. But, of course, questions are not going to be resolved uh, with one meeting uh, alone. We want to continue to work with uh, all of the parties to find a way forward to a lasting and, and durable settlement. Uh, there are a number of outstanding issues, ones that need to be uh, discussed and worked through, and they're not easy issues. So we want to engage with both presidents. We want all parties to be involved in finding a way to bring about peace in Nagorno-Karabakh. We were actually encouraged after November 19th that there was a period when the ceasefire was respected by both sides. The number of incidents fell uh, dramatically. And we took that as an encouraging sign. Now, we know that the ceasefire is very fragile. Uh, events of the past weeks demonstrate that the ceasefire is fragile. Uh, renewed tensions are not helpful as we try to move forward. Uh, we need to ensure that there is trust on all sides, that the atmosphere is conducive to make progress. And we hope that the ceasefire can be respected, especially we'll be entering the period of the Olympics in just a few days. And I hope that all parties could commit themselves uh, to full respect for the ceasefire as we work through some of the issues of a settlement. I think renewed tensions do have an impact on, on negotiations. Uh, I think one of the difficulties is after 20 years of neither peace nor war, there is distrust among the parties. And that's why the ceasefire and respect for the ceasefire is important, to try to build up that trust in each other, to have confidence uh, in all sides. And we, as mediators, would like to try to, to, to build on that. Now, uh, the ceasefire is fragile. Uh, we uh, understand that uh, there isn't a, a, it's not a perfect ceasefire and we're not looking for that. What we want to see is a commitment from all parties to respect the ceasefire and of course we want to minimize uh, violence, deaths and injuries, not only along the line of contact but uh, along the Armenian-Azerbaijan border. I'm not sure that I can make that direct uh, connection, but we're concerned. Look, there have been human lives lost on both sides of this, and it's tragic and regrettable when that happens. We don't want that to continue, and we want the ceasefire. We hope that the ceasefire would also contribute to an atmosphere where we can make progress on negotiations. I would have to say as well, I hope that the people of Azerbaijan will stand up and call for greater efforts to be made, not only to respect the ceasefire, but to make progress on a lasting settlement. One of the things that's lacking in this discussion is a real commitment, I think, um, a popular commitment, that enough is enough. The time has come to find peace. Uh, let's now take practical steps from today forward that help to bring about uh, peace. And I'd like to hear that not only from the highest levels of government, but also from uh, the people of uh, Azerbaijan and Armenia. Well, I'm not exactly sure what you're refer referring to, but I'd be very careful about making link linkages. I've been to the line of contact myself. I see how fragile it is. Uh, the distances between both sides are really very small. 
uh, I understand uh, as little as 50 kilometers between the forces. Uh, and certainly the area I visited was several uh, hundred meters between uh, the, the forces. I said kilometer, but I meant meters. Um, uh, several hundred meters. This is close proximity. Of, of, of military forces. What we don't want to see are uh, sometimes even s simply you know, incidents that occur that can escalate. So whatever we can do to minimize the, the risk of, of conflict along the line of contact and along the Armenian-Azerbaijan border, those steps uh, we would welcome. I, I've heard this is no coincidence and that there is some linkage. I can't demonstrate that. Uh, I think incidents, whenever they happen, whether we're in the region or whether we're back in our capitals, are, are re regrettable. Um, look, this, there is a ceasefire, but both sides acknowledge that there is a war going on, that forces are facing each other along the line of contact. And make no mistake, this is a dangerous situation. We'd like to see this resolved. I believe that if this conflict can be resolved in a durable way, this will be a new era of, of prosperity uh, for the region. It's something that both Armenia and Azerbaijan should welcome. Look at the kinds of resources that be, are being devoted to this conflict over a period of two decades. This is resources that can be much better put to use for the people of both countries and for the prosperity of, uh, of the region. I hope that the people of Azerbaijan and Armenia will look at this not only as one of, of, of territory, uh, but also one of prosperity for the future. And I hope that, that, that over the coming weeks and months, uh, we can work uh, with both sides and involving all parties to ensure that there uh, you know, is progress made towards uh, peace. Of course, we can't do that alone. It's going to be up to the presidents. Well, w one of the difficulties is it is hard to, to obtain the facts. Uh, there are OSCE monitors, but there are only a very small number of them and they only are able to visit the line of contact on a, a very infrequent basis. So there is no independent way of verifying a, a, an, an incident. So it is very difficult for the Minsk group or anyone to say how an incident uh, uh, started. We know that there are uh, deaths and injuries on both sides. Sometimes it includes innocent civilians. And uh, we, we are not in a position, generally, to say that it was uh, 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 how an incident uh, uh, came about. So you are only analyzing the monitoring? Well, we, we see regular reports. These are reports uh, not to the co-chairs. There's are reports. Uh, to OSCE from the OSCE monitors on conditions on the line of contact. And both sides report uh, uh, the number of incidents. We've seen this over a number of years and we believe that both sides generally report reliably. But when on any given incident, it's very difficult to have independent verification. Right. Well, you know, we've heard many things uh, over recent years. Um, I, what we need to do is really to focus on the conflict, right? And we are where we are today, and we need to find a practical way forward in addressing the outstanding questions. The remarkable thing is that uh, the sides are not so far apart. Uh, there's much more agreement then there is disagreement. Now, I'm not saying that uh, you know we're on the verge of a, 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 a of a settlement. This will take effort on the on the part and political commitment uh, on the part of all sides. But the sides are not far apart, and I think if there is the political will to find a way 
uh, to a settlement, this can be achieved. And we are, as Minsk Group co-chairs, prepared to help in any way we can. And also the United States on a bilateral basis. If we can be helpful in bringing about an enduring settlement, we'd like to be there to help. Well, of course, we have to hear from President Saksian when we get to Yerevan. And as far as the two presidents meeting, it will be up to them to decide whether to have a, a, a meeting or not and whether such a meeting will be helpful at the present time. We're going to continue to work with both presidents, with the foreign ministers. We continue to have an interest in discussing this with all parties. And we'll try to, to you know, facilitate uh, a way uh, forward. It's, until we go to Yerevan on this trip, it's hard to predict what the next step will be. But certainly we want there to be a continuing dialogue in whatever form that takes. Well, we don't have a date for a meeting yeah, a, 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 yet. I, I, certainly following the November 19th meeting, both presidents left with a renewed commitment that peace is possible and that they can work together uh, on this. Uh, they said that they do plan to meet uh, again. We need to make sure that that meeting will be a useful one. It will be up to the presidents to decide on a date for, for that. In the meantime, I hope the co-chairs will continue to be active, continue to put forward uh, ideas and to work with all sides on, on finding a way forward. No country and certainly no co-chair alone is going to solve the long, the long-standing uh, now 20 years of, of neither peace nor war in Nagorno-Karabakh. Um, it really is going to be uh, up to the presidents themselves to find a way forward. Uh, we're prepared to shuttle. I'm prepared to shuttle be between uh, capitals if that's what it takes to bring about uh, peace. If President Aliyev wants me on an airplane, if President Sarkisian wants me on an airplane to do this, I'm prepared to do it. With the, with the co-chairs, because we're committed to the Minsk group process, or if there's a bilateral role, we're prepared to, uh, to do that. The United States is committed to peace in the region. We're committed to the region. We know what the benefits of peace would be, uh, including for the people of Azerbaijan, and we'd like to bring that about. There's no better time than the present. When is it going to get any, any easier to find a way forward than it, than it is now? There is a window of opportunity for peace, and I believe that the people of Armenia and Azerbaijan should want that, and should want their leaders to take advantage of that. If not now, it's not going to be any easier in two or five or ten years. Those people who believe, whether it's in Armenia or Azerbaijan, that somehow this uh, 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 conflict will resolve itself, uh, I think are mistaken. I think there needs to be active diplomacy to find a peaceful, enduring settlement of this conflict. And we should all recommit ourselves uh, to this and not simply pay it uh, lip service. The United States is bringing renewed energy into this. We're bringing a new commitment to finding a way forward. Secretary Kerry, as you may know, even mentioned this issue when he was in uh, Munich. We want to find uh, a way. The worst outcome will be a continuation of the status quo that could well lead, and I believe will lead, to more violence and instability. And surely the people of, of the region, surely the people of Azerbaijan and Armenia can't want that. The ministers are discussing the most difficult and sensitive issues. And I don't need to tell you what they are. You know what are the key issues surrounding the conflict. And it's not easy to have these discussions. Uh, it's not easy to find a way forward. But you know, it, it is a negotiation. What we want to see in this negotiation is not that there are unacceptable compromises made by one side or the other. The people of Armenia or Azerbaijan couldn't accept that. What we want to find 
is a way forward that both countries will see as a victory, as a success. A way forward where both countries can stand up and say, yes, this will lead to a new era of peace and prosperity for our people. That's what we want to find. And it's not easy. It's not difficult. And you have to remember, too, in the case of Nagorno-Karabakh, this is 20 years, more than 20 years. I mean, 20 years since the ceasefire, but more than 20 years where this issue has been allowed to stagnate and no progress uh, has been uh, made. After 20 years, don't you want to see peace? Isn't it time? Isn't it really time to find a way forward uh, uh, on this? It's an anchor that is weighing down the region. And what we'd like to do is get rid of that anchor so that there can be uh, 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 the possibility of peace and prosperity that the whole region deserves. Well, those are two separate issues, okay? That's, so that's, let's count that as two questions. <laughs> the issue of the, uh, of the Syrian refugees, we're aware uh, of that. Um, believe me, the Syrian issue is much bigger than uh, Armenia and Azerbaijan. Uh, Syrian refugees are being resettled uh, around the world and, and are something that the international community does need to deal with. We're aware of the issue. Honestly, we don't have all the facts on resettlement uh, into the, the territory surrounding Nagorno-Karabakh. We have, we, the co-chairs, have raised this issue with the UN High Commissioner for Refugees. And I believe that they're in the process of, of collecting information, getting the facts, so that we can know the way uh, forward. But I think it's a question that you can fairly put to UNHCR and see what sort of progress that, that they're made, being made. Um, I have a little similar answer on the uh, the, the farmer that I, I'm not sure all of the facts, and that's part of the problem. I, I've heard a little bit different stories on just exactly what happened here, but uh, the International Committee of the Red Cross is now engaged, I think directly, with uh, the, the farmer, and we hope that this can be resolved in a, in a successful uh, way. Um, I, I don't know what the issues uh, are in, in particular to tell you, but I think having the Red Cross directly involved is the appropriate way to proceed. Well, I, I wasn't involved until more recently, uh, but Following uh, Kazan, where both sides became very close to reaching agreement, I think that there was a period where, um, uh, for lack of a better term, the dust had to settle. And there was a period where I think uh, all sides needed to rethink uh, what the way forward should be. And you remember also in the past year that there were elections in Armenia and elections in Azerbaijan that uh, really did not allow for the kind of uh, frank dialogue that's necessary for successful negotiations. Well, the dust has settled. The elections have passed. Both presidents have renewed mandates from their people. Uh, we've had uh, one good meeting between the presidents. Now, let's see, can we build on that? And can we, can we address the, 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 the key issues in a way that both sides can find not only acceptable, but desirable uh, for, for a real lasting peace?